Well, praise the Lord and good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. And tonight we're going to be digging into the word and finding out more about truth. And that's what we're going to look at tonight. So praise God. We're going to start there because there's actually a, a whole lot the Bible says about truth. Amen. Well, let's go to God in a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for this day. Thank you and praise you for the opportunity today to get into your word. Lord, we love you. We thank you and we praise you. Pray that your hand would be upon those that are ill and sick among us today. And Lord, we just pray for healing and health. And we just ask also, Lord, that you would just open, um, just open up the doors, Lord, for uh, for just people to come forward and, and, and come to Christ. Lord, we just desire so much that people would turn from their sins and turn to you. Lord, we just ask that you would guide and direct and lead us in everything that we do and say. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, tonight uh, we're going to start out this uh, little search for truth, and and uh, well, I want to read you a little bit of the. There's some definitions that we'll read you tonight too on truth. We'll look at that Webster's 1828. What he has to say about it. Uh, some things that the the uh, Hebrew says about, the, and and uh, we'll look a little bit at the Greek, but maybe not all of that tonight. We'll see where we get to. If you could start, though, in Psalm 96, 96 is where we want to start tonight. So I'm waiting a minute for you to turn there. I'm already there because I knew we were going to Psalm 96 first. Amen. So giving you a minute to get there. Well, praise the Lord. So Psalm 96, I want you to turn your attention, if you would, <clears throat> down before verse 13. All the way down to verse 13. Psalm 96, verse 13. It's the last verse in this psalm, but it's a very important <clears throat> verse. It says, Before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. You know, I saw this verse and I, I thought about it. You know, today it's a very popular, culturally popular thing for people to say, uh, you know, his truth, her truth, their truth, you know, my truth, your truth, you know, but it's most interesting here when we look at the scripture, when it talks about God and in what he's going to do is he's going to judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. And let's just put it this way. He's the creator. So his truth is the only truth that matters. You may have a version of what you think is reality, but in fact may be very much mistaken. There's people today following all kinds of so-called truths, but there, if it's not the truth of God, if it's not God's truth, well, then you're following fables. You're following your own, your own desires. You're following uh, Satan's schemes. You're following... Uh, what the world says is popular, but you need to be following the Lord's truth. Hey Amen. Yeah, I want to, I told you, we have some definitions. I want to read to you a little bit. Um, this is uh, from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I highly recommend Webster's 1828 uh, Dictionary. And one of the reasons I do is they use scripture in their definitions. Well, that's depending on the truth for your your words and, and what you're looking at. One of the things that's interesting about it, too, is they don't uh, change the meanings of the words as they do today. Today in modern times, uh, people, what is evil, they try to call good. And what is good, they try to call evil. Well, that's because a society has turned on its head. And that's because a society has abandoned God abandon his word which is the standard his word is the foundation it is the anchor point for you to be able to interpret what is right and wrong what is good and bad and what's going on around you in the world i uh before i get to read this i i had a conversation uh, the other day with uh, someone and one of the things that i talked to them about was uh reality because they started using terminology that wasn't based on scripture wasn't based on truth what they were basing it on is 
what the culture found as true? Well, quickly pointed out to them that uh, they were basing their interpretation on smoke, on error. So you have to maintain a foundation. You see, <clears throat> I, and I shared this a long time ago, but I'll share this again. There was a very well done commercial uh, years back when uh, Marsha and I were overseas. They, I think it was the Armed Forces Network actually put this, this particular commercial together. And it was a picture underwater. It was underwater. You know, they had a camera and they were running, so it was a film. Uh, but they were showing underwater at, this, at these reefs. And the beautiful reefs, beautiful tropical fish swimming around. And uh, it was very, very breathtaking and amazing looking at all of that. And they said, you know, people believe that this is the way that this is supposed to be. And then they shot, they showed another scene, but this one, the reef was more beautiful, more vibrant. And there was, there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more fish of different kinds and colors and sizes and just beautiful, just, and, and they said, this is how the reef is supposed to look. This is how it's supposed to be. You see. What happened is that people see what's happening now and they think this is what's normal. But that's only based on what the culture thinks at that moment in time of what's normal. But when you base what your, your perception of reality is based on something that never changes, then you have a correct view. See, the Bible never changes. God doesn't change. So when you interpret the world, your surroundings, what's right, what's wrong, what's good and bad, based on what God says in his unchanging word, then you have a correct view of what's right, wrong, good and bad in the world. When you don't base it, your viewpoint on God, when you base your viewpoint on what society says moral is moral, what you think is moral, what grandma says was moral back in her day, whatever it is, then it's not accurate because it's not based on an anchor point. The only reliable anchor point is the word of God. That is what we must cling to, stand on, and, and trust throughout our lives. So when you want to get to the matter of truth, it becomes very important that you have a correct perception of everything that's going on around you. So your, your truth needs to be based on the truth. And the truth is what God says is the truth. Not on what society, culture, or anyone else has to say. It's based on what God says. If that makes sense to you. Now, 1828. Dictionary. Back to it. Truth. That's what we're talking about, right? Truth has uh, several examples on definitions here. Number one, conformity to a fact or reality. Exact accordance with that which is or has been or shall be. You know, it, it says here that uh, number two, it says true state of facts or things. The third one is conformity of words to thoughts which is called moral truth. There's a moral truth. Veracity, purity from falsehood, practice of speaking truth, habitual disposition to speak truth. As when they say a man is a man of truth. Uh, number five, correct opinion. Six, fidelity and constancy. Seven, honesty and virtue. Eight, exactness, conformity to rule. Nine, real fact or, or just principle, the real state of things. Number 10, sincerity. Number 11, the truth of God is his veracity and faithfulness. Number 12, Jesus Christ is called the truth. I bet you don't find that in a modern dictionary. Amen. You got to go back a little bit before culture uh, started influencing uh, 
some of these educators. Number 13, it is used sometimes by the way of concession, as if it says here, she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs. I love the fact that it references scripture, but one of the themes that you see of truth is that it's correct. It's right. It's something that doesn't change. It's something that is a correct opinion, constant, honesty, virtue. All of those characteristics of truth describe God's word. Every bit of it. You know, it, it doesn't just stop there. But one of the things that becomes very critically important to you as a Christian, very important, is this verse that we've just read tonight. In Psalm 96, verse 13, let's read it again with an understanding that truth does matter. Okay, let's look at it. Before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. Okay, the Lord's coming to judge the earth, we know that. He shall judge the world with righteousness, and the people with his truth. Well, it becomes very clear to us that we need to understand that if he's coming to judge the world in righteousness, and he's coming and the people with his truth, we have to understand, well, what is truth? Right? Pilate asked that question, didn't he? What is truth? But Jesus already said what truth is. Let's go to John 17, 17. John 17, 17 says this. Sanctify them through the, thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth truth. So when we read the fact that he is going to judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth, we already know because it's been defined by Jesus himself that the truth is God's word. Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. Now, the first part of that too is sanctify them through the truth. You know, you know, through thy truth, you know, it's so important for us to understand that we are sanctified by the word of God and prayer, right? We, we, get, we, we got to go to prayer. We got to get before the Lord. But God uses his word to sanctify us, to make us more like Christ, to make, to get those things in our lives, out of our lives, those opinions, those thoughts, those, those, those words that do not match up to his standard, the word, the truth, his truth. Those thoughts, those ideas, those those philosophies, those those deceitful uh, directions that are outside of God's word, God sheds the light of the gospel on them and shows us how faulty those things are, how sinful or wicked those things are. We need to purge ourselves of those things and get rid of those things and get cast off those things that are weights, those things that are not like Jesus, those things that have nothing to do with what God has said. We need to cling to God's holy word. It's a lot, right? But our dependence cannot be on some, some church board. Our dependence cannot be on some denominational committee, some denominational distinctives, our, our commitment is not based on that. It's based on God's unchanging word. So when people come out and say they need to, uh, to make the gospel culturally relevant, I say you're a liar from the pit of hell because you don't need to make the gospel culturally relevant. You need to communicate the gospel to the culture. The culture needs to change their opinion, their thoughts, their ideas, their words, their direction, based on what God has already laid down and, and, and declared in his word. Very simple. This is the standard. This standard doesn't change. The world changes all the time. You can't rely on the world. You can't rely on 
Yeah, just look at the pol politics. Let's just look at politics as an example. Can you rely on any of that garbage? You can't. They change from moment to moment, from minute to minute. They're here, there, everywhere, from one second to another. You can't put faith on that. But you can put faith in this, what God has said, what God has declared. His truth will stand forever. His truth will outlast everything. The most ardent atheist ain't gonna last. I don't care how how caught up in your wickedness you are and how proud you are of your wickedness and you you're you're out there flaunting it around it ain't going to last because God is coming. He is coming to judge the world in righteousness and his people with his truth. <clears throat> it's an amazing thing today that God God's word has declared what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. He's declared uh, what is appropriate for our behavior in life. He has given us direction in marriage, like, you know, a man and a woman coming together. Man and a woman coming together, and guess what they produce? Children. Isn't that amazing? When you follow God's plan, right? That's why there's a prohibition against doing it any other way. Why? Because the other ways don't work. There's one way that works. You know, if you get two men together, they can never produce offspring. You get two women together, they're never going to produce offspring. So God had a plan. He set everything in motion. You know, you, you rail, you, 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 you get angry with the people that are declaring what God has said. Yet... Your anger vented towards me or anyone else that's declaring what the Bible says, I mean, it doesn't do you any good. Yeah, you can get mad at me. That's fine. But it doesn't change the facts. This is an unchanging standard. You could rail all day long, but you, guess what? You can't change the standard. The standard will never change. What God has declared is right is right. What God has declared is wrong is wrong. And it will never, ever change. No matter how many laws, no matter how many things that you get past, no matter how many protests you have, no matter how proud you are, or how many people are proud of you in your sin. Let me just tell you, the standard never changes. Accountability matters. And you are accountable. Bible says that sin has a price. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Paul says, am I yet uh, therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? People don't want to hear the truth today. See, they just want to reinvent the truth to make it them comfortable in their sin and in their wickedness. They want people to be proud of them and their sin and their wickedness, but yet you alone will bear the burden throughout eternity for your rebellion against God. You alone will bear the wrath of Almighty God throughout eternity, and you cannot bear it. And God made a way of escape. He doesn't want any to perish. He wants all to come to repentance. He loves you. He doesn't want you to destroy yourself. He, you think that rebellion against God is going to gain you something? Did it gain Satan anything? No, it didn't. It gained him a, being booted out of heaven. And in his final destiny, he knows where he's going, the lake of fire. Rebellion doesn't gain you anything. And why would you rebel against God who loves you, who's, who's loved you with an everlasting love? You know, the world would say they love you, but they lie because they're not there for you forever. And they've never loved you with an everlasting love like God has. Husbands and wives, we love, you know, we love each other. We, I love my wife and she loves me, but I'm gonna tell you right now, you know, an everlasting love is a love that, that not only is one that we have now and forever, but it happened before he ever made us. Right? 
there was a day that she didn't know who I was and I didn't know who she was. But yet God knew who we were from before he had made anything. And he's loved us with an everlasting love. You don't get any more than that. I mean, that is amazing that God loves us so much. You know, Jeremiah chapter 7, heartbreaking. We're going there next. Jeremiah 7, and, and I'm going to tell you that it's heartbreaking. It really is. Because it didn't have to be this way. When you look at our society today and the way it's going, the direction it's headed, it's headed the same way. And it didn't have to be this way. Jeremiah 7, starting verse 22. God loved these people with an everlasting love too. Jeremiah 7, 22. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this one thing I commanded them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt until this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished. It is cut off from their mouth. Cut off thy hair, O Jerusalem, and cast it away, and take up a lamentation on high places, for the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to pollute it. They have built the high places of Trophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Trophet or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, for they shall bury in Trophet till there be no place. And the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. Heartbreak people that refused the truth. Did you hear what he said? In verse 23, but this one thing, this, this thing, but this thing I commanded them, obey my voice. But this thing commanded I them, saying, obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it be, may be well unto you. Simple instructions. To, to obey his voice. We have his word today. Right now. And God, God wants us to walk in obedience to his, his voice. Why? He wants it good for us. But what did they do? They... Verse 24, but they hearken not. They didn't listen, nor incline their ear, 
but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. And that's what they're doing today. People are walking in the imagination of their own evil heart. They are not doing what God said to do. They're doing the opposite of what he said to do. See churches out there doing the same thing. God warns against covetousness, and yet they teach covetousness. They preach covetousness. God warns against uh, sexual perversions, yet they teach and preach and encourage sexual perversion. A sexual perversion is using what God has given you in a way that's contrary to his word. Simple. God says no, it's no. But they, they hearken not, nor incline their ear, but walked in the counsels and the imagination of their evil heart and went backwards and not forward. The world thinks they're progressing, right? They even call them progressives, right, today? They think they're progressing. They're moving forward. They're, they, they're leaving these things behind, right? If they only understood that instead of moving forward, they're moving in reverse, full speed, heading straight for destruction. But in their, their foolish imagination, their hearts are darkened. Yet they harden, they hearken not unto me nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck and did worse than their fathers. You know, it's an interesting thing today, but people, society doesn't get better when it's in sin and rebellion. It gets worse. Worse and worse. It's any wonder that the Lord's coming back to judge people in righteousness. Right? He's coming back to judge the world and righteousness of the people in his truth. His truth. Thy word is truth. He sent them prophets. He sent them people. He sent them preachers of the gospel to preach the truth. Turn from wickedness. Turn from rebellion against God. You know, your... Your problem is not your particular sin. Your problem is sin, okay? So I don't want you to think that, oh, you know, that Randy's just, you know, focusing on one type of sin. Let me just tell you that we all have sinned. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of glory of God. Mankind's problem is not their particular flavor of sin. It is sin itself. You see, sin will separate you from God. Sin has separated mankind from God. Sin will cause our destruction eternally. Sin has a cost. God gave his son to die in our place so that we may have grace, and forgiveness in place of certain destruction. Man's problem is sin. The solution to that problem is Jesus Christ and him alone. Putting your faith and trust in Jesus is the only way out of that trap. Um, let's go to John 14.6. John 14, 6. John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You see, not only is the word of God truth, but Jesus himself is the truth. Right? You have to come to God through Christ. You want to come to the Father, then you got to go through Jesus. He's the truth. Amen. And he gives you the truth. His word. John chapter 12. Back up just a couple of chapters. Verse 44. John 12, 44. Jesus cried and said, 
He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that, that seeth me seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Then if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him the word that I have spoken. That the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. The word is what will judge us. The word is the standard. The word is the truth. It is his truth. God's truth. The only truth that matters. Well, praise the Lord. I pray that you have had a great Bible study tonight. We're going to continue this lesson on the truth next week. Lord willing. Amen. But until then, walk in the truth, cling to the truth, and reject and get rid of anything that's not like him. God bless you. Love you. Have a blessed night in Jesus.